Good morning, family. So today is the day after the storm and we've just been getting a little rain here and there, but today is gonna to be a very windy day. When I look it up on the app, it has a little wind means on there. So it's gonna be a windy day, but other than that, we are fine. How you feeling, player? I'm feeling good. You feeling good? All right. So I gotta get this nervousness out of my body, like my stomach is still doing its thing. So I'm gonna head over to the gym. Now the gym is walking distance, but the ground is wet. And there's so many puddles out there. So Donald and DJ are about to drop me off at the gym and he's gonna go, cause I forgot to get dish detergent. So Donald's gonna go over there and get some dish detergent. Do we need anything else, player? I got a list. What you getting? Um, I need some more Cheerios. <laughs> and, I forgot to get your Cheerios. And DJ needs some bacon strips. Okay. Um, so they got some good cotton salami. That's my favorite. I know that that ain't the best one, but I like cotton salami. Okay. And I want some red cups. You know, just so I don't have to mess up dishes. So you don't have to wash it. Yeah. Because we sitting here with the same full of dishes because I forgot <laughs> to get some dish detergent. I, I gotta, I gotta do better. I should know better. So, but with limited space, you can't have too much of stuff around so anyway we're going to go ahead and do that this morning and i have been watching the ocean and the water is just it's still you know moving so it lets you know that the wind is still going and stuff like that but anyway we are safe we are fine we thank you guys for all your wonderful prayers for all your wonderful words of encouragement you know sometimes we need to hear that you know so, you know sometimes we do need to hear it DJ loves y'all from the bottom of his heart. He can't say it, so we're going to say it for him. <laughs> DJ loves you guys just as much as you love him. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, we, we didn't have to. Somebody wrote, uh, that when they didn't see DJ, they got concerned. And I'm like, you don't have to worry about that because Donald will sleep in the car with DJ if he had to. Because he talked about that. He was like, if, I, if we can't find a hotel room that's going to keep let us keep the dog then we'll just uh i'll sleep in the car and you just sleep in the room and i just come up and check on you and i'm like that's so sad and sweet at the same time you know <laughs> but no we we won't go where dj is not welcome and we did think about uh having him labeled a service dog so that way he will be able to be with us wherever we go so we're going to work diligently on that while we're here it takes some training but yeah, it takes he, well he needs he's, he's mostly there he just he just needs a little more training he needs he needs a lot more training because he only likes that. I know y'all think when y'all watch these videos that DJ like me. DJ don't like DJ, DJ love don't him some piggy. I don't care what DJ you say. don't mess with oh, me. My <laughs> Donald. He know that the only time DJ likes me is when he smells the food I'm cooking. Then he'll come <laughs> and stand by my leg and he'll be like, What's up, girl? What you what you doing? But then when Donald if Donald has to go get gas or if Donald has to work outside or something and he's sitting here with me, he crying the entire time until he sees Donald and then he'll stop crying. I don't know what it is, but when we were in Houston and Donald would be gone through the day, he would be quiet he the whole time. To but it took it took about three weeks to get him to that point. And I'm like, I hate that we broke that because when we go back to Houston in January, he's gonna be doing the same thing. And I gotta go through that for three weeks because he will cry the whole day. I mean, nonstop, nonstop, just, and then one day I woke up like two or three days later and he wasn't doing it. And I was like, oh, so now he knows that Donald won't be there. So we were sneaking off doing all kinds of stuff. Cause I was like, okay, Donald, you go in the room and shut the door. Cause he gets up in the morning to play chess. Donald plays chess for at least 45 minutes every morning. He's a rated chess player, right? Yeah. Now, if y'all see him in these RV streets, I want y'all to challenge him Please to do. some chess because he loves playing it, right? So anyway, he plays chess, he'll have the door shut or whatever else. And then he will let me sleep till about 12 o'clock. Now about 12 o'clock, if I'm not up out of the bed, he gonna come and he gonna push that mattress until I get up and take him for his walk. So we had him trained. He wouldn't bother uh, bother me until about 12 o'clock. So I was like, Donald, I like this. I say, so you go in the room, shut the door and pretend that you're leaving for the day and we can go to breakfast, we can go hang out, we could do stuff. Cause if we know, if he knows that we're leaving him in that house by himself, oh, he gonna wreck some stuff, baby. He gonna tear up if he don't, if he thinks he's home alone. So we had to trick him into thinking that he was there by himself. And then when we get back and he see us, hey, well, the first time we did, he, he was like, 
I was here by myself because <laughs> that's the look he gave. And I was like, yes, you were, player. And see, you did a good job. And I always bring him a toy back when we would come back. And so when he would see the both of us come through the door, he was looking in my hand to see what I had. But that's the only time he likes me. It's when he think I bought him a new toy or when I'm cooking or when he eats. Cause when I get up in the morning and I don't know why Donald does this, but Donald feeds him when I wake up in the morning. So when he hear me getting out of the bed, <laughs> he runs to the door to make sure I'm up. And then he'll run over to Donald and be like, come on player, it's time to eat. <laughs> And you know that's true. That is true. So I got my sweat hat on this morning because when, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and lay it all on the elliptical. I'm just going to leave all of my worries and cares on this elliptical. But I just, I wait till later to make sure all the soldiers are out and they've been able to do their PT and stuff like that. So what time is it down? What is my watch? It's about uh, 9.30. It is 9.40. It's 9.40, so about 10 o'clock we'll be there. I'll go in there and, and do my little time on the elliptical. And then, um, I don't know what we have planned for today. Just chilling. Yeah, just chilling. Um, I've been just crocheting right now, so I still have to finish that jacket. But I did finish up the sweater for my grandbaby because I did one sleeve and I just have the other sleeve to do. And... Uh, somebody told me about that wonderful sale at Hobby Lobby. So tomorrow is supposed to be a really good day. We're supposed to have sunny skies. Wait, Thursday. Tomorrow is Thursday. We're supposed to have 90 degrees and sunny skies, which I hope rings true. And if that's true, I'm going to go Hobby Lobby and get buttons and stuff for that. And we have to mail something for my son. And... <laughs> We have to stop. At we have so much to do all the time, but it's, it's fun stuff. Like we, we really don't have a lot to do. This lifestyle is pretty sedentary and we don't really have a lot to do. But we, what we haven't done is been able to sit out because somebody over here, when he was putting the, uh, the tent away, he kind of crossed it up. And so now, so now it's, you know how you have your Christmas lights all jumbled up? Well, that's what he did with the tent. <laughs> I, I promise you it is it's jumbled up because I think something is bent and we can't really figure out how to unbend it so I think what we're going to do is just unattach the legs that's the only way you're going to be able to uh, do it Donald we're going to have to pull the legs out from the cloth you know what I'm saying like it has little pockets where the legs are sewn down in there we're going to have to pull the little legs out and just start from there what do you think you know what you might be right I think that's the only way we're going to, because he would listen. The other day, we were going to sit out and have coffee in the morning. And so Donald got up, he made the coffee, he set the chairs outside and everything all nice. And I was like, oh, this is nice. But, you know, here come the bugs. So he had a great idea to pull out the tent. And he pulls out the tent. And man, it's 100 degrees in the shade at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> He out there sweating did he try I say, Donald, I, it's okay, player. I was like, I don't need the tent. He wouldn't let go, baby. He wouldn't let go. I say, Donald, look at your shirt. You're wet. Your head, you're wet. You're wet. I say, stop it. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. He out there sweat. He's like, I got it, baby. I got it, baby. Five more minutes. Turn it to 20. Turn it to 30. Turn it to 40. I say, if you don't put that damn tent away and come on up here and let's go. <laughs> Oh, she got two of the dogs I wanted. See, everybody outside today. Um, what do you call them? Labradoodles? Or, yeah. I just think a lab would be too big for this RV. But I've seen people with smaller RVs with these lab. But let me show y'all these dogs. I think those are called Labradoodles. I think. Look at the tan one. I just love it. But that black one is cute too, though. I told Donald once we upgrade this RV and get us a, a permanent place, I'm gonna I'm gonna invest in me a puppy. But I, I, I always say I want something very tiny. But when you tell people what you want, they always tell you the bad of it. And I'm like, trust me, I'm gonna do my research and I'm gonna pick what I like. I don't know why people like to tell you what you should do at your big age, right? 
oh, if I was you, I wouldn't do that because what, 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 what. And I'm like, okay, but you still have to listen to people because they might tell you something that you don't know. But in all of my getting, I got an understanding of what kind of dog I want. I want like a Yorkie type dog. I really do. I, I would love a Yorkie. I just want something small. I don't want something big. And I told Donald, I was like, you can't just get one. You got to get two. And then I started looking at the prices of them and they like three and four thousand dollars. So I might have to find somebody in the, you know, who's just breeding them at home and get it that way. I don't know. But when you go to, I know a lot of people tell you, oh, you should adopt. You should adopt. We've done that. We did that with DJ. So. I think I'm going to go a different route this time. Now, we love DJ. He Don't get me wrong. We love DJ. Well, Donald loves DJ the most. <laughs> you would think DJ, DJ is a person in Donald's eyes, okay? That's his fur baby. And I don't have no problem with it because they, they need each other. I really feel like he they need, that's like their support for each other. They really are. Because when I don't want to do anything, he was like, that's okay. Come on, DJ, let's go. <laughs> And DJ and get up and go. So I want my own little love bundle. That's cool. Don't hate. That's cool. Don Juan. But anyway, I'm about to get up here and get to this gym because if I don't get it done in the morning, it's not going to get done. So uh, I'm going to call y'all right back. All right, fam. I hope y'all can hear me better this time than the last time I tried to record. But I'm sure you can hear the wind really picked up. So yeah, this, now this is a true story. You ain't gonna believe it. Across the ocean from us is, I don't know what you would call that. That's a little big peninsula thing. Wait, where's my phone? You just put it up there. Oh. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm serious. <laughs> hey, I'm getting old. Listen, you ain't gonna believe this. So across the ocean from us, I don't know what that is over there, but you can see cars over there. And I feel like it's just an open area where you can go fish and do stuff like that. And I feel like van lifers go over there to boondock or whatever they do. Now, you see how this wind is blowing right now? Yesterday was a little worse and it was rainy. Do you know there was a man out there on the water in kayaking. his canoe? Kayaking. He was kayaking? Kayaking. In this weather? Mm -hmm. Donald say, Peggy, that's a man out there. I say, no, he, no, that's not. I say, that's something else. We try to get a shot of it. I don't know if we can zoom in enough to show it. I but. hope y'all could see him from this clip I'm about to show you. And I'm like, it's sad that you have to, because you know it was a man. Because mm. <laughs> they like to do adventurous stuff. I'm not saying anything, but I'm saying something here. Now, yeah. listen. Why we have to tell your grown behind not to be out in the ocean on your kayak slash canoe in this weather. Why do we have to tell me and stuff like that? Like, I just didn't get it. And I'm like, does he have a death wish? That's a great question. You know, I don't even know what to say. If she's 100% right. I was, my eyes got big when I saw him out there. I'm, I'm just, uh, you have to take your eyes off the ocean because the weirdest things happen out there. Like the cruise ship was big for me because I thought it was amazing. And I told Donald, I was like, see, that's why I put that deposit on that cruise. Because it, I felt it. I felt it. It had to happen. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, I, I would not do that. And of course, I'm, I'm sure he was a local because they don't think of this as bad. He probably grew up doing that kind of daring stuff. But I was just like, no, don't do that. Why, why are you doing that? But so that's probably why they're out. And over here, the MPs are coming like every 30 minutes. They want to make sure people are not doing what they should not. You should not have to tell grown people to not 
do something in dangerous situations, but they keep doing it. They put the flags out for dangerous tides and it says no fishing. I mean, no no boating, no surfing, no swimming and stuff like that. You can fish from certain areas and everything. And they put all the warning flags out, but... Yeah. And people were out fishing yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And that is the truth. Even though the wind was blowing hard and all that. They, I, I, but I think people just love to fish. It's calming. It's relaxing. I don't know what it is. But whatever that is inside of them that makes them fish during a tornado warning and <laughs> uh, hurricane. Tropical storms. Tropical and storms and stuff in the area. I don't know what that is. But you just have to wonder sometime. But they're saying, I mean, people are out there fishing now. Yeah. It's always because you have to. Sometimes I have to look over at the rocks because sometimes you'll think it's a, the peak part of you know of a rock. No, it's a person's head. They out there like right now. You wouldn't even think about it unless I said it. And then when I say it, you can see a couple people out there fishing, and you only know they out there because the cars are out there. Yeah. Because they they park their car real close to the rocks, then they walk over and they fish. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that too. But I just thought that was so weird. But anyway, I'm gonna go to the gym and leave all my troubles and burdens on that elliptical. All right, fam. All right. I'm too embarrassed to show y'all, but your girl just left the gym. I told y'all I was gonna leave my all on the elliptical and my all on the treadmill. Now, you would think I did something, won't you? Your girl got it in. I did 30 minutes on the elliptical, which was equivalent to 306 calories burned. And then I did 15 minutes on the treadmill and that was 166 calories so 480 yeah that was a good day for me uh, like it's hard when you first go back to the gym but I know y'all keep hearing me say I'm going to the gym I just want to show y'all proof that your girl is in it to win it this time I found me a really good high protein diet that I'm following now yesterday was a total wash. That's why I had to come in here because I probably consumed 5,000 calories yesterday because I was so nervous eating. But I fell off and I'm back. So, of course, the first day is going to be the hardest. I'm not going to bring you guys workout videos unless you want to see them. But I'm, going, I'm giving it my all because I have a cruise coming up. I have Disney coming up. And then my great nephew is getting married in July. And you know, I'm that auntie. I'm the fun, silly auntie. I'm always be that. My nephews love me to death. I'm the favorite aunt. It, it just is what it is. I'm telling you. They, they make me feel so good when they see me because they just love on me and I love it, right? And they always tell me, Peggy, you're the favorite aunt because I'm, I'm fun. I ain't going to call myself silly, but I'm fun because life is too serious, you know? So anyway, <clears throat> I have things coming up. and I got to look my best. I do. I have to look my best. Because I want them to be like, that's your auntie, man. I thought that was your sister. No, you, you, well, we know they ain't going to say that. <laughs> I don't know now. <laughs> but yeah, so. I got, but all in all, it's health. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah. don't want to be. I'm glad you touched on old. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because we're getting older. We ain't getting mm -hmm. younger. We're getting older. And as things start to break down in my body, I, t I get on the phone and tell my kids all the time, take care of your body while you're young, please. Get that weight off. You start walking, start eating yeah. healthier. Start, you know, do do something. Because when you get older, you can't reverse some of the things that you do to your body. You just cannot reverse it. And I had a lot of things on me as a young lady, like a lot of young things, a lot of things as a young lady on me. And I found food as my comfort. Losing a husband at such a young age, the, right after him, my dad, and then my sister, my brother, and then just life was lifing the hell out of me. You hear me? And I just, food was my comfort, and before I know it, I was 300 pounds. <laughs> but then I got my health in order when I married Donald, and I got down to a really good weight. And then life started lifing. <laughs> the grandbabies came and then life really started lifing. And one day when I don't mind talking to y'all about it, I'm going to talk, but I can't talk about it today because I'll start crying. But uh, you have to find other outlets besides food because food will be your lover, baby. It's seductive and mm. it's delicious. And it's all the things that you feel like you need. <laughs> and it makes you sleep your troubles away. 
That's a poetry right there. That's, that's beautiful. <laughs> that 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 right there is succinct and direct and beautiful. That was I'm proud. I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah, so I'm trying I'm trying to reverse what I can and I'm trying to get back to healthy, happy pig. Cause Donald always tell me he was like, We used to be fun, we used to do stuff. Now it's like, no, nah, I'ma stay in, I'ma lay down. I'm you can't let life beat you up. So I'm gonna tell you. If you go to the gym and work out your troubles or just walking, you don't have to go to the gym, yeah. just walking, you'll be amazed what it'll do for stress. I know these things and I still don't do them. Every time we go for a walk or exercise, we all feel so good coming out and feel yeah. motivated and feel energized and stuff. We're proud of ourselves. It's just getting yeah. ourselves to do it is the, yeah. sometimes that's, the harder that's the part. Thing. That's the thing. But I told Donald, that's why I was glad we come here for a month mm. because the gym is right behind the RV park. There's no excuse. It, it's, it's not even 20 feet. <laughs> so there's no excuse. Yeah. Why not go to the gym? And then they offer classes too. So if they have, Zumba is my favorite. Yeah. So I'm going to look at the schedule and see when they offer Zumba because your girl going to be out here doing some Zumba. And uh, they used to have a belly dance class. I'm going to tell you something. If you could ever find you a good belly dance class, you're talking about your waist being snatched, baby. Because when Donald was deployed, I did. They they opened the gym. I probably told y'all this a million times. So act like this your first time hearing it. So when Donald deployed, when they went to Afghanistan, they opened the gym up to all the wives of deployment and so we could take all the classes and they were free and there was no number that you could take right so you would sign up and when you scan your card and let them know hey she can get in any class baby when i tell you we was doing zumba four five times a week we was doing belly dancing we was doing uh what do you call that stuff that tybo but it's not tybo it's something else it's it's that uh that really hard workout because i did it oh, one time crossfit crossfit i let me tell y'all something. I did CrossFit one day and couldn't walk for three days. Because I was in there killing it. And the lady walked over to me. Uh, Cam Cody's wife walked over to me. She said, Peggy, you better slow down. She said, I know you're feeling good and you're doing good. She said, you better slow down. Because if not, you're going to feel this in the morning. I couldn't even wake up good that morning. She on the phone. Uh-huh, how you feeling? I said, girl, I'm fine. I tried to get out the bed, baby. Them thighs were sore. I, I was hurt from the waist down. And I was like, oh, I should have listened. I should have listened. Because I was in there killing it. Like, I thought I was doing what I was supposed to do. And, baby, I woke up the next day and couldn't hardly walk. And we lived on the third floor. Can you imagine trying? Because I had to go pick my daughter from school every day. She was still in high school. So I had to walk up all 18 of them steps and walk down 18 steps. I was hurt. I was hurt. And I didn't have nobody to say, can you please go get my daughter? <laughs> she was pushing me up the steps to help me get up the steps. But anyway, health is wealth. When people tell you that they mean it, health is wealth. When you're young, do it while you can. And then I have somebody who's willing to do it with me. Donald is willing to do it with me, but you know, uh, he worries about Peggy and I love it. And he's concerned and he's like, baby, I need you to get up. I need you to get up. He's so encouraging, he's encouraging. And I don't listen because when I, when I get mad at him, he, he'll stop and then he'll go right back to it. Baby, you gotta get up. You gotta get up. Peggy has told up. me several times she wants me to be that drill sergeant, Donald, that just yells at people, "Get up! Yeah. Let's go! Stop giving up on yourself." <laughs> that what she says she wants me to do. It's just hard because you know I, I love her and everything. And if, if she starts, he goes too up, easy on me in the gym, though, and I don't like it because because <laughs> when he came back from Afghanistan, you know you could get up and run on the track while they were doing PT, as long as you weren't bothering them. And so when he would get up and do PT in the morning, I did it with him, you know. And then when we got stationed in Germany, I, I just stopped, but I should have never stopped because once you get yourself to a point where you can work out real good and do all the things, don't stop because you'll be like me. I was in there dying on that machine, but I was like, I got to I gotta keep going. I got to keep going. And so every day I go, it's going to get better and better and better until I can actually get, because my goal is to get out back on the track and run. So at one point I was able to run because I had a couple of young girls with me. And so I was able to run them out and walk them out run them out and walk them out and we did six miles every morning we ran well we started off walking and then we would run now it ain't what you call running but it was just a, a light little jog you know just very light but I did it yeah and I want to get back to that point because when I was doing that the weight was just dropping dropping off and so this time in my heart in my mind in my spirit I feel like I have because you know it starts in the kitchen ladies it I don't care what nobody tell you 
you got to get your eating under control. And you don't have to be as strict as some diets, but I know what works for me and I'm going to do it. Because like I said, I have all these things coming up and I, I want to look forward to them. And I want to be healthy. I don't want to be at home sick. Feet hurting, back hurting, head hurting, clothes don't fit. You know, I don't want to be that. So I'm, I'm talking to myself and if it bless you, thank God it blessed you. But I got to get my life in order. So I'm going to come over here every day. Like I say, it's right here. They offer classes. They, they even have trainers if that's what you choose to do. I don't need a trainer. I got Donald if I would just listen to him. If I would just listen to him. <laughs> so uh, after this week, I'm going to push myself to do something a little more strenuous. So this week, it's going to be all cardio. It's got to get my heart up to par. And then maybe three days next week, Donald could come in and he could give me a leg day and an arm day. And so we're just going to work like that. But if all, if you don't do nothing else, walking is amazing because that's how I started off yeah. before going. I started walking and I started losing weight and I wanted to do more. And so that's what I did. So that's my spiel on that. Y'all gonna think that she sped the video up. That's, that's the way I she talk. She's just highly motivated right now. You know, that's how I sound. I'm like, do I sound like this? But she's yeah. just highly motivated right I now. I am, and I'm just like, if it, when I see the sweat, baby, when I see it, I'm like, oh, I accomplished something today. But I was in there dying. I like dying. And when I go in the gym, I always look for the fan because I want to get next to the fan Me too. so I could blow it on myself. But guess what? They can keep their little fan because I got my little portable fan yeah. and I'm bringing it to my. Because I I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm about to pass out because I get so hot. I'm a sweater. I'm a sweater. Like, I sweat really bad. <sighs> yeah, but anyway, that was that. What you got, player? What you oh. get? Oh, I got the stuff I got. I I paid too much for my Cheerios. I went, I went and got the little nut crunch, apple cinnamon crunch Cheerios this time. Ooh, you splurged. Yeah, I splurged. I'm going to tell y'all a good cereal. If you've never tried it, try Special K with the little chocolate flakes in it. I don't like that. Oh, my God. That is so... Especially when you're trying to eat right. Special K is a good cereal, but that not. That chocolate ain't the best, but it's better than eating a, a big breakfast sandwich. You know what I'm saying? So It's got a lot of vitamins there. A lot yeah. of vitamins that a lot of people miss. But the, this dark chocolate, and it's so good. Oh, it, it feels so good, especially with a really good... We should go get me some Special K. No, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm having a protein shake this morning. I'm sticking with it. All right, fam. So we will talk to you in the next clip. All right. Donald, look at all these birds. They are flocking to the water because the fish are coming up. So after that glorious workout, I told Donald we should walk down to the ocean front and just see how it looks after the storm. And it is so beautiful out here. And I have been out here collecting seashells. Look at that one, fam. That's bigger than your hand. That's a huge one. I've never seen them this big before. Wow. And look at these beautiful seashells and oyster shells that we've collected. I didn't even come down here to get this, but I love it. Look how pretty they are. I don't want to drop it. They're pretty heavy too. So I'm going to take them home and rinse them out real good and keep them. Every time, every time we come here, I, I do a day of pick collecting seashells but I never do anything with them but I have a craft that I want to do with these but they are so beautiful look at that I mean look at that one I found one you go mine oh okay go, <laughs> go off player go off but look how pretty those are I got some really really good ones and some different ones because when we get back to Houston in January I'm gonna get myself a fish tank and I'm gonna put some of some of this kind of stuff in the bottom of it. And yeah. I, I don't know what it is about the sound of the ocean, the fresh breeze, the air. I just love this place. Even the sounds of the helicopters. It just does something to me. This is my happy place, fam. Yep, we found it. So I'm gonna show you what we're looking at here.
I love it here. Wave to the fam, Don Juan. Say hey to the fam. Oh, no, no, look at that one. That is so big. But it's so fragile, I'm not going to touch it. Because you could look at it and tell. It's very fragile. I don't want that one. And I already have one like this one. So I'm not going to pick that one up. But all the people are out here after the storm picking up all the seashells and stuff. It's just so nice. And we were just coming out to get a break. We weren't really coming out to look for seashells, but they were so pretty, I could not pass it by. But listen to the sound of that ocean. It just, uh, it's something about the ocean sound. It's just so relaxing. I love it. If I wasn't too lazy, I would take my shoes off and put my foot in, my feet in the water. But I'm just too lazy. I don't feel like it. Now this is the part of the ocean that people fish on. And if you look all the way down there, I mean, it's, it's a far distance, but down there is where I think they have it roped off and you can go swimming and stuff right there. They don't advise you to swim on this side of the ocean. So they have a side down there that people swim and stuff at. But we'll show you that later uh, in the week. But yeah. Oh, now this is a pretty one. Look at this one. Look at all the character and definition in that one. So pretty. Hey, Pookie. You having fun? <laughs> you having fun, Pookie? Yeah, I'm having fun. Look at him. He wants to be let off that leash so he can run, but yeah. you can't. There's a leash law here. You can't have your dog off the leash. So that's the only reason why we don't let him loose. But we're going to walk back over towards the doggy park and let him run a little bit before we call it a day. Hey, babe, can you put these in your pocket? Okay, let me just put them in. So, oh, you got it? Donald got <laughs> Donald supports all of my foolishness. I appreciate it. <laughs> so we're going to head back. I hope you can hear me. In that last video, you couldn't really hear me much. So I'm trying to scream a little louder so you can hear me. But I feel like they, when I watch the weather report, tomorrow says it's going to be a beautiful day. It's supposed to be sunny and 94 degrees. Today is just supposed to be a lot of wind and 94 degrees. So, yeah. But, you got anything to say to the fam? Uh, no, fam. I'm just, she, she stole my pockets, y'all. I'm a pack mule. <laughs> Got pockets full of seashells. Hey, we never got them so big like that before. So I'm loving it. What is this? Coral. Coral? Okay, I don't want coral. <laughs> All right, fam. So we're gonna see y'all back at the house. I need to hop in the shower now because I think I stopped sweating. So I'm gonna call y'all back. Good morning, guys. So this video is actually the day after the storm, what I'm showing you right now. I think the conversation I had earlier in the video was a day or two later. But this is the day after the storm, and I just want to say that I never was afraid of dragonflies. But in St. Louis, we didn't have a lot. I mean, you saw them from time to time, but you didn't have a lot of them where it would make a difference, right? So after the storm, I noticed the next day that we were inundated with dragonflies. I mean, they are everywhere. And I'm just like, what, Lord, what is happening? So Donald and I walked down <laughs> to the pier and they were so aggressive. And I've never seen an aggressive dragonfly before, right? I mean, it hit me all in the back of my head. Just, just bumping up into, I guess because there's so many, they just flying crazy, but I have just never seen this many dragonflies. I had to run to get in the car because I'm scared of them now because it's so many. It's just so many of them. And Donald was saying that these are the type of 
drag the dragonflies eat like uh, gnats and mosquitoes and stuff like that, which I'm thankful for because I get bit up out here in these all these streets by these mosquitoes because they go to town on me, baby. They be like fresh blood. Let's go. There she is, y'all. Let's get her. And I'm I'm telling you, I feel like I fell into a mosquito's nest. But these dragonflies, baby, they are just. And I mean, they have their purpose and everything, and I get it, but did the storm bring them? I, you know what, like I said, like Piggy said, they eat mosquitoes but, but, and stuff. Right, but, but before the storm, we had a few, like you're going to see them, yeah. you know, because we're about to war and everything. But it wasn't to this level. No, no, no. I think because so much water came in that there's way more mosquitoes, which means way more food for the dragonflies. And so the dragonflies are like, okay, high, yeah. high food area, let's go over there. And I think at the um, on the ocean here, there's a lot of you can see a lot of fish jumping up out of water. So the birds were flocking, like the very first day they were flocking, you know. And I'm just like, wow, but the the. <laughs> Y'all yeah, know I'm scared of every. I keep telling y'all this, but I mean, they don't bite, they don't do anything, but they just look intimidating and they're just flying so aggressively. I guess they having their little family reunion out here and they just out here doing what they do, but it's just a ton of them. They almost remind you of the cicadas, but they're not quite as big as cicadas and they don't make the sounds that the cicadas make, but that's what they are and I, I have to shut the blinds in the house because I'm like they fly by this window too much I can't I can't I can't it is a lot of them out here but hey guys do yourself a favor and google uh, Rhode Island dragonfly swarm and because they had about a one minute swarm of dragonflies where it was like I don't know 20,000 of them Jeez. and you couldn't and it was blacking out the sun and people were just standing there recording it and stuff so yeah there's quite a few here I don't want to try to minimize that or anything but you gotta check that video out they just me throwing something in fam alright so this morning Don and I are heading out to the mail we're making a mail run when I order my stuff from Amazon we can either get it two ways we could send it to an Amazon locker which is right outside of post not even what two miles not maybe even two miles, not yeah. even two miles or we could have it come to the post office on base now when you send your stuff through the post office like amazon has two day delivery well it's going to take four days and i don't have four days so i sent my stuff to the amazon locker because i am about to braid my hair since i am being more active right now so it only makes sense for me to braid my hair so I can stop wearing hats and stuff when I'm sweating and doing all this other stuff. So I'm going to take today and tomorrow and braid my hair. You know I like color, so it's going to have a color in it. And um, it'll just make life easier for me. Now, I can't show you these people, but I was telling Donald we could actually van life once we get into sticks. and I just want him to consider it. And so before we upgrade, we're going to rent a van mm -hmm. and we're gonna live in it for a week you know just because we're not going I'm, I would not dare go full-time in, inside of a van I just wouldn't do it but I told Donald I was like if we're gonna be home and just uh, RV like you know some summer times and some, when school is out and when you know just when we can go see the grandkids and stuff like that uh, maybe spend 20% of the year on the RV. I think van lifing would be the ideal because these people right here, they're older than us and they're making it work. I'm going to go over and talk to them today because I'm just nosy. That's who I am. <laughs> but it just, it seems really spacious. Look, she's recording the uh, dragonflies too because there's a lot of them out here. <laughs> but it just seems like that would be perfect for us because then we don't have to worry about storage and stuff like that. Yeah with the RV and stuff like that. So we're just gonna look into it a little bit more because at first our minds was closed to it, but we gotta think about it a little bit because I think we'll have more flexibility and also I can help them drive a little bit. There you go. That I like, nice. So you're talking good stuff. And plus you can park in more places though. You can drive it straight yeah. into like a Walmart parking lot or any kind of store we go into, grocery store parking lot. Yeah. It's not gonna be all cumbersome or anything. 
yeah. it's got everything we need. It's easier to cool because it's much less space with one big air conditioner. So there's a lot of good points about van life as compared to our It is. Life. We just have to really look into it. You know what I'm saying? Before we upgrade, because I would hate to upgrade and be like, oh, man, Donald, we should have done van lifing. Yeah. And I just feel like that's the direction in which we should go. I, I really do because I'm, I'm intimidated by this big old truck and trying to pull the RV. I can never be of any help to him. I'm sorry. I just can't. I'm not. I can't yeah. do it. So anyway, we're going to look into that, but that's later to come. So today we're just going to go ahead to the Amazon locker. And then what else we do? DJ has his appointment tomorrow to go get his nails clipped and groomed and stuff like that. So while DJ is being taken care of, I think Donald and I should have a date. I feel like DJ's a baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get you a sitter. Got to get a sitter. Yeah, so while DJ is doing that, we might go to our favorite restaurant, Olive Garden. Olive Garden. We love the Olive Garden. Like, that, out of all the restaurants, because we go in there and eat soup. And my daughter was like, you eating soup in the summertime? And I'm like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm going to say this. Olive Garden is high up for me. But I think my favorite is like Texas Roadhouse because you know I love a good steak, a, steak. Or, okay, a okay. good steak or something. But yeah. for just like a lunchtime thing, a light meal and good conversation and just being able to sit around and smile and laugh and talk and stuff and have some good food, yeah. Olive Garden is my favorite spot. So yeah, We've had the best times at Olive Garden. I think we can just let our hair down and just talk about any and everything. You think it has anything to do with you getting a glass of wine every time? Maybe. That might have something to do with it. Because one time we went, they gave me a sample. <laughs> and I was like, Donald, now, as soon as I saw that, part? I thought, that, is that for all of us? Is that for both of us or just for you? I said, well, you know, they gave her a sample. They gave her a glass of wine, a four, was it four different kinds of wine? It was three. Three different kinds of wine. Yeah. And they gave me a sampler. And I think I've been in love with that place ever since. But I don't know. Yeah, that's your so, first Moscato. I remember that. You, you said, you know what? Bring me another one of these Moscatoes. So you had four glasses. Did I? Yes, you did. Yeah. Well, I won't be doing that. But, uh, <laughs> I ain't trying to push you out. Are you embarrassed? I, no, I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> I, I have a glass of wine or two from time to time. I don't do it every day. Maybe, I, I'm going to be honest, I probably have a glass of wine maybe once a month. If that. If that. Because we got, we got bottles of wine. We still got wine, wine left from. And we, that we haven't even opened. And I'm like, oh, when we get together with other people, I'm like, oh, I'm going to pull my wine out. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a drink. And then by the time you get over there, they, come on, get some of this wine. So I never get to bring my wine out and stuff like that. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get our day started. And we're going to call you back, Vanna. All right. All right.